Welcome to Straight Line MTB, and you've been waiting for it, and I can't wait to give it to you, is the full ride review of the Transition Spur. All right, welcome back to Straight Line MTB, where we bring you reviews of bikes that are hard to find and help you decide whether you wanna wait six months for them or not. So today, the Transition Spur. I have had quite a bit of riding time on this bike since we did our first ride review. And I'll say probably the most amount of riding time for a review because this has been the first bike that I have grabbed out of all the six bikes that we have right now in the garage. I feel like this bike has done a lot of things really well for 120 millimeter travel and we're going to jump right into them and talk about them. Now I'm going to talk about this bike on trail, climbing, descending, and then some constructive feedback and maybe some recommendations for you that I have about this bike. So on the climbs, no surprise, 120 millimeter XC sat slash trail bike, it's going to get you to the top with pretty relative ease. I know I've said about other bikes that we review that they're really great climbers, best climber I've ever had. Well, guess what? Old championship pony here has topped all those bikes. This bike is the absolute best climber that I have ridden. We have reviewed the Izzo, the Ripley AF, and the Orbea Occam, and I've all of those bikes, I've said how great they climbed. Well, Mr. Transition Spur just sneaks right in and does the job even better. Being 28 pounds, it's leaving you that extra, extra just, uh, it gives you more, more energy. It keeps that energy in the tank to get you to the top of the hill. One thing I did notice that on the technical grunts where you're really pushing down, I'm a big guy and I'm really suffering to get to the top of the hill to go down. So I'm not a smooth pedaler, but this bike really allows you to have that just hectic climbing, uh, pedaling ability and it keeps the, the rear end very calm. It has very, very minimal pedal bob. And when you're on the gas, this bike is like, let's do this and get to the top. So on the YT Izzo, I noticed when I was really grunting up the steeper sections, the front end wanted to raise up a little bit. On this bike, I did not have that problem. And I think it's down to the longer wheelbase. This lar size large has a 12, 19 wheelbase. So it really helps keep that front end down, which I appreciate. Cause on the YT Izzo, I did have a little bit of trouble getting up some of the technical sections when I'm grunting and pushing down real hard. And one of the biggest standouts I found with this bike is the geometry. Transition did just hands down an excellent job for the geometry because you hop on this bike and it, it really felt like I was sitting on a big enduro bike. It was comfortable, the reach felt really good. Uh, the seat tube angle is at a 75.9. I am a huge fan of like the 77 and 78s, but I didn't feel like I needed this seat post angle to be any more steep. It just, the, all the numbers gelled really well. The 480 millimeter reach and the 1219 wheelbase, it, it's just harmony. This, this geometry, it made me feel right at home being somebody who loves riding big, big enduro bikes. This bike showed me that even a little bike can show me the same kind of love. So now let's move on to the descending portion on the spur. And this is where this bike surprised me. So of course, being a 120 millimeter bike, wearing some real skinny legged rear shock and a XC SID fork, I was like, this thing's gonna buckle under pressure when I hit it on Rocky Trail or anything big. And I was very, 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 and I shouldn't be saying very, but very surprised at how amazing this bike performed on the downhill. So shout out to the SID fork. This is the SID Plus at 120 millimeter. I was worried that this fork was gonna be a little bit of a noodle or uh, show some flex, but I will say that this bike was more stout than the Fox 34 that we are riding on the Izzo or the Ripley AF. This thing was just a, just a powerhouse. I had no issue. And I think being just a shorter bit of travel and having that 35 millimeter stanchion gives you that strength that you need to just really corner hard and you're not feeling any flex. So that was awesome. And the rear shock, it looks like a little small rear shock. It's XC level, but again, I, I can't fault it. This thing really held together. It didn't, didn't cry, you know, it had a, 220 pound monster on top of it and it just kept asking for more. So that was 
an amazing, amazing feat for such little XC suspension package. Anyway, so moving on to the actual ride. So you watch some of the videos that we're riding. I took this thing on a Black Diamond Trail Rocky. It is just a chunk fest. It's nasty, it's loose. Dial it back just a little bit, but this bike handled it. I It was one of the fastest bikes in the 120 millimeter travel category that I rode on, but the spur came in with its just ability to pop around and be light and just, you know, have a, have a fun, have a good old time. But where this bike really shined for me is on the smooth berm trails. This bike just goes. And I think it's down to that snappy pedaling. You're coming out of a corner, you start pedaling, this thing reacts instantly. Um, and it really pushes you to wanna go faster. I found myself pedaling more on the downhills on this bike to get that speed. And again, you be careful because once you hit those pedals, this thing wants to rock it down the trail. Um, being a 28 pound bike, of course, it is poppy, it is playful. I will say it didn't feel as playful and poppy as the Ripley AF, which was a surprise because the Ripley AF was about, well, about five pounds heavier and fatter tires. Of course, 28 pounds, it, it, it's a playful bike. It's fun, you tell it where to go and it will go there, um, yeah, but it is sporty. So like I said, on the climbing, it does have a sporty nature to it, being 120 millimeters. So you're not gonna hit that, get that absorbing rear suspension that just eats everything up. You're gonna wanna be a little bit more active, keep your knees a little bit loose. But once you get, I got used to this bike, I was just rocketing, sailing down the trails, having a good time. Um, Stonewall's a trail that I ride frequently for our test loop. It's fast, it's got a lot of quick shoots down, hard hard corners. This bike took it all in stride. And then it on those quick punchy climbs, there we go again, we're going fast. And I was beating a lot of records on this bike that I had on some of our bigger bikes. So high five to the transition spur for being a giddy up and go. All right, so now let's talk about some of the things that I liked and maybe didn't like about the build kit. So the first thing is going to be the brakes. While the SRAM G2 RS is on this bike, they're not bad brakes, but I think somebody at my weight, over 200 pounds, and I'd say I ride a little bit on the aggressive side, and I like to hit some of the more chunky trails. I did find the limit of the G2s quite often. Uh, I, what I did to remedy that is transition spec this uh, model with a 160 front rotor. So I put a 180 on the front and I know the newer generation of these bikes coming out now come with a 180, which is definitely recommended. Um, but I will say being somebody who is a Magura fan, I would swap these brakes with the Magura uh, Trail Sports. Those are brakes that have been really good for my big self and I like the power that they provide for me. And when I get in trouble, they're always there and they got that Aside from the brakes, I think the build kit, the, the GX build on this is great. The forks, of course, I said how amazing they were. I know the higher end models come with the ultimate version. I don't know what the difference of the damper is between the Select Plus, aside from it being lighter, but I can't imagine it being much better. Um, the rear shock, same thing. I don't know what's the difference between the Plus and the Ultimate for the rear shock because it has the same settings. It's got the lockout, which I didn't address it in the climbing, but you're probably not going to need that lockout. The wheels is one thing that I was thinking of. These are the arch, uh, Stan's arch, and they're 26 millimeter internal. And I know the higher end versions come with DT Swiss with the 25 millimeter internal rims. I would really like to see this bike, how it performs with a 30 millimeter internal, kind of widen those tires up just a little, little bit. I know you can't go much wider in the rear. It says transition says 2.5 four in the rear is the biggest. I try to put the Ibis uh, 35 millimeter internal width rims with a 2.6 inch tire and it is a no-go. So I think 2.4 is about gonna be your limit. And again, speaking of the GX drivetrain, uh, it's just a great drivetrain. I know it's, you know, you got the XO and the XX1. I don't see a need for it for me. I like, aside from weight, if your weight a weight guy and you wanna save a few grams here and there, um, but I think the GX is, it's just a, a hard working uh, drivetrain. It comes with the style front cranks. I know they're a little bit lower end, but yeah, I have no problem with them. 
The Anvil Bar, again, I said how great it was. I'm really enjoying it. I would maybe trim it from 800 to 780. That would kind of speed up the, the steering on this bike, which I think it might deserve. Um, and I, I'm also thinking maybe I want to try a 40 millimeter stem instead of the 50 and kind of bring it back, give it a little bit more aggressive stance. Um, but other than that, I think uh, the cockpit's really nice and nothing that you need to change unless you really want to. Tire spec, I think is great. I do like the dissector out front and the recon in the rear. But I will say I did change them for the winter because I need, I found that recon sliding around in the wetty, the, the wetty wet months. So I threw the dissector on the rear and now we are, I am riding the Tioga Edge 22. So stay tuned for that because I got some more uh, content on that coming up soon. And then of course we got the Deity Super Cush grips, which I love. They get a little bit more cushion and I enjoy them. And then one thing I didn't talk about is the one-up dropper. It's a 180 dropper, which is awesome. I love it. But I will say on this bike, I could probably run the 210 millimeter dropper. So just keep an eye out if you get this bike, be ready if you want a little bit more drop. I don't think it's necessary, but it is an option here if you uh, have a little bit longer legs like I don't. So before I wrap this review out, I just want to again highlight Transition as a company. Um, I, they are a boutique brand and I know $4,500 for this build and I know now they bumped up to the price. I think it's $4,800 for this build. It's not, it's not a little bit of money. And one thing I think that we overlook sometimes in reviews is the company, who you're buying from. Transition has just continued to show me that they're amazing. They're always there for me. If I have a question, they're quick to answer. Even just being a bike reviewer, reaching out, trying to get product. I, I was in touch with one of the, with Lars, the president, great guy, great feedback from him as well. So shout out to those guys. Just know that you're not only buying a very expensive bike, but you're getting what I think should come with every bike is that customer service. They're helpful. They're gonna make sure they take care of you and they're gonna answer any questions that you have. So thank you for joining me as I ramble on and drool all over this amazing bike that I love so much much. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this video because you never know. We might bring a bike in that you're going to love so much and the more subscribers and the more support that we have is going to give us more clout to bring in more bikes and more bikes and give you feedback from us that's honest and truthful. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at straightline underscore MTB and that is our address for TikTok as well. And if you guys know, or maybe you don't know, I research everything and I love to just look at bikes and help people. So if you guys have any questions, comments, drop them in the comments below, or you can send us questions on our website at straightlinemtb.com and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible and give you thoughtful and helpful feedback because that's why I made this channel because I love bikes and I love helping people. So again, thank you very much and I'm excited to bring you another video coming up soon.